Hello? Computer? Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Hello? <laughs> oh, is it working? Are we back, bro? Are we back? Is it working? The caps got banned? Sorry, no cap. I don't know, I, the inter my internet really crapped out. Seems like it's working now. Yeah, what's up Georgie? Hey Taint. I don't know what happened. Live chat, turn off live reacts, save, okay. I really, I have no idea what happened. It just cracked out all of a sudden. But I guess we're back. Yes, we're back. I might have to like, it's, we'll see. We'll see what I do later. Let's go. I guess let me do my, let me do, let me do, <laughs> I couldn't handle a face, face reveal, face close up. Let me do my thing again really quick. What's up y'all? Welcome back to the live stream. Sorry about those internet problems. It's your girl, Chris. Checking in from my home gym in the basement. Uh, if you're new here, I'm a fitness enthusiast. I am focusing on bodybuilding right now. I used to be a certified personal trainer, but I think my certification has lapsed and I don't train people. Uh, I love talking about all things fitness. Feel free to drop your fitness and nutrition questions in the chat. You don't have to ask if you need to ask a question. You can just put the question in the chat and I would love to help you out. I strive to provide an inclusive and welcoming environment for everybody, no matter your fitness level, your goals, or your body composition. If you're watching the VOD, I super appreciate you. Thank you so much for the support. Leave any comments, questions, or concerns down below. I will answer it down there or I'll do it in an upcoming live stream. And last but not least, if you're enjoying the content and you have not already subscribed, please subscribe, hit the notification button so that you can figure out when I'm going live and hit the thumbs up for the algorithm. I super appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm streaming on YouTube. Still not used to the, the Tuesday streams. Sorry about that. I know, I know it's a, a, a transition. It's a transitional, transitional phase we're in right now but t doing the tuesday stream is working out better also hi daya when are you back bro who am i supposed to talk to in the morning when you're not streaming pro streamer boy is it boise hingis the x bicep flex stare down got you i don't think i can recreate it are you watching the stream gamer Oh, you got that yesterday? Okay. Well, maybe you'll stream. Were you streaming this morning? You got sick, bro, please. You never get sick. Also, hi, Ryan. Welcome in. Did I say hi? Welcome to the YouTube stream. Yeah, I stream on YouTube now. Soldier's looking buff. Thank you. Sometimes I feel really big and moosklies and sometimes i'm just feeling like straight up fat but it is what it is you slept like eight hours or six hours the entire time bro what is basketball really that serious great top you like the back the back is pretty cute too here are the leggings i tell you no matter what my bombshell leggings make me feel good. You was just lazy most of the day? No. Were you partying? 
Oh, that was just a thing you did last minute. Oh, okay. Ooh, you were there for a friend's funeral? Damn, bruh. Sorry to hear that. Great moose, please. Thank you. Yeah. Nice vans. Did I tell you I got these chucks at a thrift store? Perfectly my size. And in a, a like very my style, I think. They're like pink and gray. <laughs> yeah, perfectly my size. And I've been really into elastic shoelaces lately. So I put elastic shoelaces in them. His brother was a mess, basically staying up all hours and night, keep from not unaliving himself from alcohol. Jeez, bro. Oof. You really working on stream anymore? Do you do it before or after to vibe with us? So, oh, I'm not feeling flexible at all. <laughs> so, basically, I've been taking Tuesday as my day off. I do not work out every day of the week. I usually work out four or five days a week. So I've been taking Tuesday as a day off just to like hang out and chat with y'all. But I am doing most of my, I'm still doing, I'm still working out, obviously. I just do it off stream. What am I eating today? I don't know what we're having for dinner. But I actually do have some workout video that I wanted to show on stream and like talk about. Since I'm not doing the workouts on stream, if I do film myself, I'll just like put put the stuff together into like a little compilation and make an unlisted video so like we can talk about it. So there is still some fitness content going on, even though I'm not working out on stream. I just, I feel like when I'm working out on stream, my workout is not very good. And like, I can't engage with you all as well. So I've honestly, since I'm only streaming like once a week, I just like to hang out and chat and just like really focus. No, I mean, for me, I'm not blaming you and I don't feel some type of way about it. I um, I like that I can just like be here and talk to you guys instead of kind of like dividing my attention. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we can look at the video I got now if you guys want. No more D's nuts joke shorts. Thanks. Who's lurking? Thank you for the lurk, Pagro. Drive safely. I mean, you really got to come at me with a really good D's nuts joke to catch me with the D's nuts because I'm so suspicious nowadays that it's actually very difficult. How can you cut your hair and it still looks the same? It's because it's the same style, just shorter. That's all. <laughs> it's the same style, it's just shorter. <laughs> Where am I? Where's my browser? Yo, what's up, Chirag? I don't know if I'm saying that right. So, yeah, oops. Here's a workout. This is a push day workout. So in my workout split, it's basically eight days, but I, I work out on a rotating like five day schedule. Haven't really seen any good. That's what I'm saying. People don't come in. Oh, Ghost from Alcazar. Wow. How are you? So this is one of my push days. This is not my bench focus push day. We watched Joey and I finished the entire Fallout show. We really enjoyed it. No spoilers, but we really enjoyed it. We liked it a lot. So if you are somebody that's into Fallout, I think you would enjoy it. And I think people that don't know anything about Fallout would also enjoy it, just as like kind of a post-apocalyptic sci-fi sort of thing, but they might not get as much value. Aw, uh, thanks for stopping by. Goes from Alcazar, I appreciate you. Have a good day at work. 300 plus hours played. I played a lot, like three, four, three, four, uh, like three, no, three and four in New Vegas. I have not watched Shogun. <laughs> Wait, what were you saying? You've been wanting to get some more CDs lately? <laughs> Come on, man. That's like so, like, is that really supposed to catch me? Do you play the game first or watch the show first? The thing is, 
if if you have absolutely no experience playing the fallout games i don't necessarily think that you need to like play them to watch it read the next comment after see this love i have <laughs> you kurisu thank you hulu has too many unskippable ads fallout is on um uh fallout is on amazon prime <laughs> but yeah if you don't want the ads on hulu you got to pay for the extra so the thing the thing is the fallout games at least the most oh they asked about shogun yeah i don't know anything about that if i'm honest so the the series on amazon prime is not really it kind of like it's not based on one specific game. I think Joey looked it up and it's like kind of a continuation from where the games left off. They kind of like go like one to the other. It's all subbed. Yeah, but they, it's, I don't, I don't know if I can necessarily recommend you to play the games. So I only played 3, 4, and New Vegas. I did not play Fallout 76, and I didn't play any of the earlier games. Yeah, you might want to just watch a YouTube video about it, because it it's like a lot. They are like open world games where you got to do a lot of walking around and like doing quests. And like some of the stuff, even if you like played them a lot, you still might not understand necessarily like some of the references i think that i think that you can really i i do think that like you can enjoy the show without knowing too much about fallout i think honestly you might want to just watch the show see how you feel about the world and then if you're interested maybe you go back and play some of the games but i i will say that some of the games would be very difficult to play nowadays so i played fallout 3 when it came out because it's set in like dc but like, it, it was hard to play back then. There was a lot of times where I would get stuck places, just like walking around and I would have to restart the whole game because, or like restart because I couldn't get out. It, it's tough. They're definitely like cheap on Steam or whatever, but it, it it's a little hard. I think the one that I played the most was probably Fallout 4, maybe. Most people were introduced to the franchise with Fallout 3, yeah. Fallout 3 in New Vegas probably needs some good modding to get fixed. There's a character that speaks English even though he's supposed to be assumed to be speaking Portuguese most of the time. Hey, what's up Twee? How are you? But yeah. I... Yo, Victor, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you. You're doing good. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. Yeah, they are on sale on Steam right now, but some of them I think would be very difficult to play. They would be hard. It'd be hard to play. But I mean, if you're good with mods, I don't know anything about that. I've never played any of the Fallout games modded. I've never played Skyrim modded either, but you might you might enjoy them. I think I would have a hard time. I think I would get really frustrated trying to play them. But I, I mean, I can tell you, I have done. So when it comes to Jojo, right? Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, the anime, you know, it has all those parts right now. I think it's up to like six or seven parts. I watched part four first. My friend recommended that I watch part four. She really loved it. And she was like, you should watch this so we can play so we can cosplay it together. And I did. She was like, you don't need to really net. You don't really need to know any of the other parts of it, but just watch this and like, see if you like it. And I did, I really liked Jojo part four. And I was like, okay, this is fun. And I went back and I watched everything else. And I even read a little bit of the manga. So like you might watch the fallout series and be like, wow, this is really cool. There's a lot of deep lore going on here that I don't understand. And then you might decide afterwards to play the games and then maybe you play the games and then you rewatch the series and you're like oh shit I, i'm understanding so much more right but i don't necessarily know that you need to go back and play like three open world rpg games just to watch like 
what is it, like a six or eight episode series. Sometimes you have to take the path of least resistance first. <laughs> so that's just how I feel about it. Shogun show is only in English and Japanese. The reason they speak English, even though they're supposed to speak Portuguese, is because it's easier for audiences. That makes sense. <laughs> so. Anyways. that All that to say, Joey and I really enjoyed the Fallout series. Jo oh, you know what? Okay, we'll, we'll do this later, I guess. I still want to... Still want to talk about these workouts but we can do it later joey and i this is a recap of my week joey and i also watched on netflix the series called parasite the gray which is a live action series based on the parasite manga anime live action series but it's korean and it takes place in korea and it is not a remake of the originals. It's like... It's like what happened in Korea at the same time as what was happening in the original Japanese stuff. Um, so Joey and I went in like a little bit skeptical because we knew it was Korean, but we were like, what's gonna, what are they doing with this? Like, is it, is it like a remake? Like, why would they just remake it in Korea? But it wasn't a remake. It was like a completely different story in the same world so if you like parasite par it's called parasite the gray i'll write it out parasite the gray it's on netflix um so if you like the original especially if you like the live action movies i think you would also like this that being said Korean media has a very like distinct style. It's like kind of over dramatic um, and the editing can get a little like choppy sort of. I don't know. They like a lot of like jump cuts. They like drama. So like if that's not really your style, maybe that wouldn't bother you. But um, overall, Joey and I really enjoyed it and it kind of like it kind of leaves the world open for even more stuff from that world, which I think is interesting. Want to ask, do you have a reference to a famous person or content creator that has ideal eyebrows? No. So I, I, I basically showed her a picture of how I do my own eyebrows and I told her like, I like them a, a little bit on the thicker side. I don't like a really dramatic arch and I don't like them. Like the way she wanted to do them, they were gonna be like arched and like really long. And I'm just like, I don't, that's not really my style. I kind of just want, I want, I like a more like Korean Asian style eyebrow. And she just like, um, like in the, when I initially got them done, she just like mapped them out and like we talked about it and she made corrections and that's how we kind of got got to what I wanted. A lot of Asians get tattooed eyebrows. I ever thought about that? I mean, the thing is, there's a lot of Asian people that naturally don't have very thick or defined eyebrows. And that's one of the reasons that they get them tattooed on. Like you often see Asian people that don't have like basically any visible eyebrows at all because the hair is just very thin and fine. I wonder if it's like Indian dramas where they have those crazy face zooms. So I, I have watched some Indian movies and I would say it's not quite as dramatic, but it's like, it is definitely, it's like, you know, I would say like a normal American movie and then Korean movies and then Indian movies. Is like if, if we're talking like the two extremes, Korean stuff is kind of in the middle. <laughs> How about an anime character? No, I would not reference. I would not use an anime character as reference for my own face because I'm not an anime character. They look really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I think she did a really good job. But yeah, I mean. I would say. Also, in general, in a lot of Asian cultures, and I will say this, this is my observation. This is not a, um, 
This is not a statement of fact. This is my observation as somebody who is culturally American, although I am half Korean and half white, I'm culturally American. I've never lived in an Asian country, but by my observation, there is a greater emphasis or people feel like they need to look more put together like all the time if that makes sense like you go out and you look more put together whereas like if i'm in america like i go out i have no makeup on i don't feel some type of way some people do obviously i'll wear sloppy clothes like i don't care it doesn't really matter to me but it's like it's not as common to see that in asian countries yeah image is i think more of a big deal in asian countries than in some western countries in my experience from what I've seen on social media and when I have visited Asian countries. So that's probably another reason why you see a lot of Asian women getting their eyebrows tattooed um, and stuff like that, just because it just makes it really fast and easy. I mean, it's so, I don't have to do anything to my eyebrows when I put makeup on. You've observed the same thing in Asian countries, yeah. So, it's, I mean, it, it is like, I like to think that although I do play into some of these patriarchal, like, I don't know if that's the right word. I do play into some of these like social norms, right? But I like to think that I am relatively aware of it. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of things that I just don't subscribe to when it comes to societal norms. but. Um, I like having my eyebrows like this, like all the time. I feel, I, I just like it. I like it, it's nice. Honestly, if I knew somebody that I trusted that could do like eyeliner, the way that I like my eyeliner done, I would probably get my eyeliner tattooed. But I just don't, I don't know of somebody that I would really trust to do that. But yeah, I like having my eyebrows done like this all the time and yeah that's that's fine it's okay i i can tell you that like when it comes to being on social media like i definitely will do my makeup and stuff to be on social media because i know that uh from the standpoint of the viewer i present better or i look better whereas you know i look less less good are the uh, objectively speaking if i'm not wearing makeup and stuff like that you know do i do i wear this when i work out by myself not usually usually i just wearing a t-shirt and some baggy shorts but i know that like it's it brings the people in right when i post like flexing pictures on the internet i say come to my stream they're more likely to come to my stream than if i had no makeup on and a big baggy t-shirt What's up, Battenberg? Fuck societal norms. You're also your three subbed. Tier three subbed to Jersey Mike's. I, bro, I love Jersey Mike's. That's like my favorite sub place. Just start doing your makeup. You are you are trying to like go the opposite direction, bro. For me, I'm still I'm still catering to the male gaze, and you're trying to go the opposite direction. What's up, Daniel? How are you? Welcome in. See, it worked. See, look, Georgie is man enough to admit that he was beguiled by my wiles. And I respect you for it, bro. I pulled him in with my looks and my moosklies. And then I lock him down with my weird antics i don't know i don't know why you guys hang out damn swoles that's how i that's how i trap people into coming to my streams the same thing i always drink my bcaa's yo urban prince see 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 it works i know what i'm doing the male gaze yeah jojo pose gun shows exactly i'm too sore i don't think i can was it this late i'm too sore
Two silver. Nice personality with plenty of advice on fitness. Thank you, Mopar. See, Mopar... Mopar's a real one. But, I mean, a lot of people don't don't necessarily come for the fitness advice, and that's okay. Lobotomized by my bicep size. My biceps aren't actually that big. If anyone comes to the stream and asks if anyone has been trapped here, <laughs> you bet you're blinking twice. The Ginyu Force gun show, yeah. You're making catchphrases. That's a pretty good one. But I don't think my biceps... I don't think my biceps are, like, that great, if I'm honest. They're like, okay. Come for the vibes and the fun conversations. Thanks. Thanks for being here, y'all. I appreciate you. Huh. They're pretty good. Uh, they're okay. I just don't think that they're maybe like my best feature. I don't know what my best feature is. I think my chest split, if I'm honest. But like, it's not, doesn't look that impressive, I think, as like a good bicep does. I see a lot of girls do this, but I don't have the boobies for that. Do you know what I'm saying? I think my back looks really good. But again, it's not like, I don't know. Is this my imposter syndrome coming out? Is it? Although I will say, okay, I will say, wait, we should watch this video, I guess. I will say, so I went to, workout i went i visited a friend hold up i went to hang out with a new friend she goes to a commercial gym and she can't come to my house because she's like really badly allergic to cats so i drove down and we went to um we went to her commercial gym and she took a couple little videos of me, which I really, I should have returned a favor, which I did not, because I'm, I'm bad at that. I was like very um, intimidated to take videos. Are you doing the transformation or bikini? So I am doing the Ape Classic transformation and also the showcase, but I'm doing figure. So also, yeah, now that Lou says that, let me plug in the description I have some links. It's the first link in there for the Ape Classic Transformation and Transformation Challenge and I would say Bodybuilding Showcase. Open to everybody being hosted by Acro IRL. I will be doing both the transformation and the showcase and I'll be doing kind of a bodybuilding figure class posing routine. Uh, it's open to everybody, but you have to come to the Ape Discord, the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast Discord, and you have to verify. It's a little bit like Reddit. You have to like, just to keep um, the spam to a minimum. And then in that Discord, there's information about the Transformation Challenge. And the way that it works, there's signups for the transformation challenge at 20 weeks which is going on right now and then 15 weeks and then 10 weeks so but you know if you're not sure what your transformation is gonna be like you can kind of like submit at each of the intervals which is what i'm gonna try to do so currently i'm not cutting and i don't plan to cut until after i get back from japan but Hopefully, I can actually stick with it this time. I know I was trying to do a little bit of a cut beforehand, but eh. No, it's not a server for Prime Apes. It is a server for Aesthetic Physique Enthusiasts. So, yes. That's why I have been um, wanting to practice my posing a little bit more, and I need to kind of come up with a routine. I... That's, I would say like, I'm gonna do a routine that's a mix of like the actual figure routines, but throw in some of my own poses because honestly, like the figure routines are not that like fun. It's very kind of like straightforward. We're going to Japan in May. We'll be there from the 9th to the 27th. Um, yeah, and then when I come back, that's when I'm gonna start my cut for the transformation challenge. But I need to take my before and after stuff. I just, uh, I didn't have anything that I could wear for the before video that wasn't like super lewd. I kind of like bulked out of all of my normal bikinis and stuff. 
So I had to order something. I had to order some bottoms because I didn't have any that fit. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. It's it's not quite three weeks, but it is a good amount of time. Longer than we usually go. Usually we're only there for like two weeks. And we will be hanging out with Ariel for like the first week. She's gonna be there with us. And then Nania is also gonna be in Japan around the same time. <clears throat> so we'll probably hang out with him as well a little bit. I mean, just it's not even just like, it's just everything in general. This is everything in general because most of my stuff is like I typically order down because my boobs are really small. If I order like large, I usually order like down and get like a string bikini because I can adjust it. But yeah, the bottoms are just like uh, a touch too small for somebody else's channel. Two weeks enough time to really explore and not have to rush. So. I would say definitely for us, for me in specific, like we live on the East Coast of the US and one entire day takes up like, is all travel there and then like another day back because it's like a 16 hour flight and then it does take time for you to go from the airport to your hotel or Airbnb or whatever. So like you kind of have to keep that into, keep that in mind. But if you're coming from somewhere that's like a little closer, like on the on the West Coast, um, you might not have as much travel time as us. Yeah, we we are doing a direct flight. <laughs> yeah, we try to do a direct flight if possible. You got to hit the hay. OK, good night, sweet Lou. Thanks for being here. Hard to adjust. Um. Joey and I don't have that much trouble adjusting to the different time zone. We try really hard. It, you know, it depends on like when we get there, but we try we try to make ourselves adjust. We try to make ourselves adjust, right? So we're landing around four o'clock PM their time. So we will, we'll try to force ourselves to stay awake until like a normal bedtime and then go to sleep. But usually we find that we kind of wake up a little bit too early, which is, it's not like abnormally early if you have like a, a job, but you know, a lot of places don't open until 10 or 11. So yeah, a lot of times we end up just kind of like putzing around the hotel room for a couple of hours until stuff starts to open. Well, the thing is that I, um, I have a really hard time sleeping on airplanes. So I'm typically up anyways, and then I'm just in Japan. So I'm really excited. So usually it's not that big a deal for me, but I, I can understand why other people might have an issue with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I could find if I wanted to pay more, right? It's just like, I usually don't want to pay more to get something that is better sized for me, right? So, I mean, that's just something I struggle with in general as somebody that kind of lives outside of like the normal body shape of most women. I have a very wide back, but really small boobs. So yeah, like it, it can be very difficult for me to buy like lingerie and like stuff like that. But it, it is it is what it is. I'm not like mad about it. It's just something I have to keep in mind. So basically like I have some, t I have like, I'm just gonna wear a sports bra for the, cha the transformation challenge. And I just ordered like a swimsuit bottom. That's like full coverage. Everything else I had, it was just like, it was like straight booty cheeks out. And I was like, this is not really safe for Acro's channel, right? And and it's fine. It's totally, it's not a big deal. You know, I just, I have kind of a very strange and specific wardrobe considering all the stuff that I do on the internet. And I just, I didn't even have like normal kind of like underwear. A lot of my underwear, like it's hard to see it because it's kind of close to my skin color. All of my underwear is really high waisted because I wear high-waisted leggings to work out and I just want and it's all like this color 
So like I can't I can't even just do it in my underwear because it would look like I'm naked but also cover up a lot of my like what is this? My pelvis. So yeah, it's just it is what it is. It's not that big a deal. But I am pl planning to do the transformation challenge. It's going to be it might be streamed on Acro IRL's Twitch channel, but it, the whole thing will definitely be posted on YouTube on the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast channel. So like I said, all the information is in the, some basic information is in the description. And when you go to the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast Discord, there's even more detailed information about the, the Ape Classic. But also I'm happy to answer questions because I think I have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. But yeah, that's that's the thing. That, that is the thing that's happening. Yeah, booty cheeks out. I tried. I tried on a couple of my my things, and I was just like, "This is not. This is not it." I also I don't shave my pubes like straight up. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily think this is TMI. Like we can talk about pubes, but I just like I don't shave. And I'm not gonna shave just for this thing. Cause like for me, it's just incredibly uncomfortable. It's like, doesn't look good. It's like all bumpy, it's a lot of razor burn. So I just got some swimsuit bottoms that's just gonna cover that up. So it's just like not an issue. Like I don't feel some type of way about my pubes being out and about on the internet, but you know, I don't want people to be weird on somebody else's channel because of me. So that's all that's the thing and it's not really a big deal okay pubes there is yeah i wonder what you're gonna do about the pubes nah yeah, i mean i don't feel some type of way you can ask you can ask those kind of questions basically basically the bottoms are kind of like boy shorts they kind of come this way so they shouldn't really be visible but yeah i just like i don't i don't shave I'm not into it. I, I might do it every once in a while, but like, it's always a really bad time for me. It's just like, I feel terrible. I feel itchy. It's like, it doesn't look good. It's all red. It's not cute. It's like cute. It's like cute for like two seconds. And then it just looks like you shaved a fucking porcupine or something, you know, it just, it doesn't look good. So yeah. <laughs> I like I'm being serious too. Like it's it's not cute, yeah. It like an uncooked chicken but worse. It's like it's an uncooked chicken but worse. I definitely think it's more like a porcupine. You got waxed a few times and there's more comfortable than shaving, but that hurts way more in the moment. For sure. I have also gotten it waxed before. And I felt like it also didn't look that good either when I got it waxed because there was like some hair left over and it just grows back really fast. I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> I slapped them breasties with the skin on. You love uncooked chicken? Nah. So anyways, that, it, it is what it is. It's not that big a deal. So this was me working out in a, in a real gym. Can you believe it? Yo, this, if you have this machine that it's like out but it goes down this thing is wild it hurts so bad dude it's awful it's so so hard to do and then we also did this standing curls and it was so difficult because i have a leg curl machine but it is nowhere near as hard as this one we also did some glute kickbacks the way that my friend does them, let me demonstrate a little bit. The way my friend does them, she doesn't kick straight back. She kind of like brings her foot kind of out to the side a little bit. So it hits more of over here instead of like under here, if that makes sense. When you go straight back, it like, it gets more of your under butt, but we were working kind of like the side. It was really good. They had. And the cable machine they had at this gym had handles on it near near the the handle adjustment and you could hold on. It was really nice. Prefer the look of fuse, but not the taste. I feel that. That's a mood.
your hands would lock up bro that that standing curl was so difficult i don't know if you can see it but i'm using like literally almost the most smallest weight you can and it was really hard that's on a track rather than a cable you can barely feel it, it has a machine that's on a track a glute machine oh i know which one you're talking about the one where you put your foot on it and you kind of just like go like that. I think I like the cable machine for kickbacks because like if you step farther away, you can extend your foot and stretch out your glute a little bit more and then bring it back. So I think so. OK, well, also, I want to just say. Oops, I did the wrong thing. When it comes to kickbacks, I think a lot of people maybe are not maximizing their gains on the kickback. So a lot of people, this is what I have observed from the internet. A lot of people will, will do the kickback and swing it and just bring it back down. It'll be more of a swing and it won't really be a controlled motion. So like a lot of also people will really bend over really far for no reason. And like this might help a little bit with like stretching. You don't necessarily have to do that. You just bring it out in front of you a little bit more and save your lower back, right? So if you're doing a glute kickback, I would really suggest you, you have to think about it. Don't swing it. Don't use your body. Really engage the muscles and it's more of a push, right? And if you have to hold it at the top for just a second and then resist on the way down, don't just let it, don't just let it go. You know, really concentrate on pushing, feel it in your glute, hold it, to make sure you're not swinging and then let it down really slowly. Wow, thank you for subscribing, Bantish. Don't use your body yet. Don't use your body. Only use your leg. Only use your leg. So like I said, a lot of times I see people on the internet just like doing this and it does engage your glute a little bit, but like you're using mostly momentum. You really want to concentrate on using the muscle, keep it really slow and controlled, even on the way down. So that's my suggestion. Also, my ass is like so sore, bro. So fucking sore. So you can see, like I'm letting it pull and then coming up, keeping it pretty controlled. I could even, I could even go slower on these, but I, I was really feeling it, Scoob. And then we also did good mornings. So she didn't really get a lot of video of me doing this, but we basically did like a drop set of good mornings with the barbell until like we couldn't go anymore. And then we just like put, put the weight down and just like did it body weight. It was a killer. I don't do a ton of good mornings. Yeah, you're welcome, bro. We also, I put, I'll put the links to the unlisted videos in the description after the stream. But we also did a crazy leg press machine that I've never seen before. And it was like so good. So we do have a leg press, but it's like, it's not the best leg press ever. The one that she had at her gym. I could literally, I could literally like, like my knees were touching my chest. Like that's how much range of motion. Yo, what's up? How you doing? Welcome in land down punder. So it, it was a really good workout. It was a really cool gym. Oh, you know what? I also, there was some pictures. Some pictures at the end, but yeah. That little burnout at the end was kind of a killer. You doing pretty well? Hell yeah. What's up, Annex Captain? How you doing? And then they have a posing room there, which was pretty cool. This is us. Yeah. Another thing I will say, 
like when anytime if you really want to engage your glutes oops sorry just switching if you if you really want to engage your glutes right if you're doing any kind of like hip was this hip flexion movement for your glutes you really gotta like i've said this before you really have to like open up your asshole yeah hip hinge like you don't don't come down just to like here and like don't round your back and do it you have to like i like to think chest up back neutral and then when i come down i'm really trying to like spread my glutes dude you really have to like like open up even if you aren't super flexible you like you'll feel your glutes opening up and that's how you know you're really hitting it and anytime you're doing like a even if you're doing like like a hip thrust movement like don't don't try to like shorten the movement try to like have more hip hinge and then when you come up really squeeze it you just got here just talking about i'm just saying man if you want really good glute engagement that's how you got to think about it you know look we just got to tie it back in right if you want to do like face pulls think about think about the fucking bukake right and if you want to get really good glute engagement on your hip hinge movements, you have to think about spreading your cheeks. Cause it's like, okay, this is fine. Like I'm coming down, but it's not until like, I'm really spreading them that I really feel it like right here in my hamstrings. <laughs> yeah, stiff. I, I also like stiff leg deadlifts, like Romanian type deadlifts. Those are work the best for me for sure. <sighs> I was talking about, um, I was just showing some of the stuff I did with my friend at her gym over the weekend. So she goes to she goes to one of the D and the um, iron gyms in the area. Y'all uploaded the secret workout. What do you mean? No, they're supposed to look like that, bro. They're supposed to look like that. Bro, this place had so many good machines. I'm like, if honestly, if I lived closer to one of the the gyms in the DMV, I would probably get a membership, but I just don't live close enough. What's up, Tech? How are you? Even their cable machines hit different. Their cable machines are really good. They had They had about like, five different kind of leg press machines that it was wild it was crazy yeah it was very very anabolic i felt about like 10 percent more muscular one of the guys that was working there asked if i was compete a uh, competitor and i was like nah i'm not but thanks that's us hanging out doing gym girl shit No, I, uh, I went to hang out with a friend. Oops, shit, I keep doing that. I went to hang out with a friend. She cannot come to my house because she's too allergic to cats. It's just like, it wouldn't be good for her. So I went, I drove down to go work out with her at her, the commercial gym she goes to. And we had a really good workout, bro. My glutes are still like crazy sore. I made it, bro. But then I had to be like, actually, he he was. We were talking a little bit, and I was like, yeah, I'm like too. I'm I'm not natty. And I can't. I'm not natty enough to be in natural competitions, but I'm not juiced enough to be in untested federations. And he's like, yeah, I feel that. He was, and he was saying that he competes um, in the OCB. I was like, that's cool, bro. He's like, I'm I'm too. I'm like, I'm too chicken to do like hard hard stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm like in between. I probably could, if I stopped taking SARMs, like I could probably test into OCB, but it's just like for my moral code, I don't think that's right, you know? What's up, Ariel? Yeah. So 
but it was cool i really like the lighting there really made my shoulders pop full vid on youtube no so this was the first time that i hung out with this friend where we started talking on um instagram this was the first time we hung out in person so i didn't want to make things weird but you know if we do another workout together i might ask like if she's cool with me like vlogging it so we'll see i think she herself is also trying to do more stuff on social media so like that would be cool yeah you like them? more bombshell leggings bombshell always makes me feel good uh, SARMs are like a performance enhancing drug, basically, but it's not really anything too serious. You're going to do a cool running show? You're going to compete in it? Don't they have a NPC show at the same time? Super cute. Thank you. They're bro. They are so comfortable. Like, I think I also convinced her to buy some bombshell stuff because I was just talking, I was just saying so many good things about it. They're, they're some of the only pocket leggings that I've tried that don't rip when I pull them on. So when you have leggings with pockets, they have more seams in them. A lot of times if they don't um, have enough give in the leg, when I pull them up, the seams will rip. I've never had that problem with bombshell stuff. You know, blast and then try to pass the drug screening like a true fake nanny, bro. People do that though. Like we know people do that, which is like kind of sad. It's like not that big. It's like not that serious, bro. Just compete where you're supposed to compete. Yeah, they are nice. Well, no, I'm just saying, I mean, it's because it just depends on like the size that I order because like for some leggings, I have to order for my waist. And then the, the legs are not big enough. Because, like, proportionately speaking, that's just... I, don't, I mean, I don't even think I have big legs, but that's just what happens sometimes. You know, it just usually happens more with, like, cheaper leggings. There's a boy right here. I can't bend down. My ass is too sore. Also, I wanted to show... Uh, I did a bench the other day. Well, here's a push day. That I just wanted to show. I gotta pretend like we're doing fitness content here, right? So I'm just gonna put it on and we can talk about it. First hour flew by. I know it does. Machip on the bench. He got some treats earlier. I don't think he can have more. Look at his little collar. So they have to wear collars now for the microchip feeder. So, which I feel a little bit bad about, but it's really, the feeders are working out so well. I think it makes them a little bit itchy, but it is what it is. It is what it is. He's being a good boy lately. Being a good boy. He can't, he can't steal Totoro's food anymore. I've been trying to give him some snacks, a little more snacks than, um, than usual because he kind of like eats his food too much, too fast. And he can't eat Totoro's. Yeah, they're gonna they'll get used to it. So he has some treats. You had your treats. You chill out. But the the feeders are working out so well. Like it's just, it's just they just got to get used to it. So this is a push day. Like I said, after the stream, I will put the links to the unlisted videos. Uh, in the description if you ever want to go check them out again but this is one of my push days and i always start with my shoulder my lateral shoulder exercise because that's my focus i'm covered in cat hair now it's itching me and so basically i did four sets of however many and then on the last set i did a drop set like your client at her vet he's an auto litter cleaner bitch looks like <laughs> yeah, I've seen those before. I don't know actually how well they work. We haven't, we don't have trouble with the litter. We just had trouble with the food because Mafik wants to eat everything and Totoro is a very picky eater. So now their food is completely separate and they can't get into each other's stuff. So on this day, I was using the cable machine, but on my other push day, I used the dumbbells. I like both. It's just like a little bit different. The robotic power cleaner is really nice, but they are quite expensive. Yeah, I don't think for me, I don't think the that's worth it right now. 
and then the patented low to high flies, but then you, you don't put them down. You do this thing. I actually really love this exercise. It's really good. You don't think it costs is worth every use since you don't have problems. Yeah, we don't have problems with the cat litter, but the, the automatic feeder was totally worth it, even though it is also quite expensive. Also, hello, Cubone, welcome in. I love these because I can get like a really good stretch. It really feels good. But I also have quite flexible shoulders, no shoulder issues. So if you're somebody that has like some shoulder problems, you might not be able to go as wide as I do. You just have to be really careful with the flies. I don't really, I don't necessarily recommend like pec flies for people that are newer to working out because you might not be as in tune with your limitations when it comes to your mobility. But for me, like I really love this exercise. Any one of those decorative litter houses, the litter pan can go in, getting a robot litter box whenever you end up getting a cat. <laughs> And then I did I did an RP style um, deficit push-up burnout set. It felt really good. I don't normally do a lot of push-ups, but this was kind of nice. And I did like I did on my toes till failure, and then I dropped to my knees and I went again. I think I got like eight to ten reps. It was really felt really good. But yeah, so we have for our cats we have two litter boxes, and they have kind of their own little house. Never seen that device. What device? These are just two the like steppers I have, and I just like put um, put a yoga mat on it because it was hurting my fingies. Yeah. No, it's okay. You're not dumb. I didn't explain what it was, but it basically it's just like two platforms and then I put a yoga mat over it because the platforms have like um, the kind of stuff that's supposed to keep your foot from moving, but it just hurts my hands. Yeah, it hurts my hands, so that's why I put the yoga mat down. Yeah, not the fingies. And then into shoulder press. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay comfy. When, and this is another thing, you know, it really depends on your mobility and like what feels good for you. You also thought of special equipment. So I like to really stretch. I keep my arms engaged the whole time, my shoulder engaged the whole time, but I really let it come down very far. And then when I go up, I kind of squeeze together a little bit, but I keep my hands out very far, very wide because that's how I can engage my shoulder better. You can see here. But I think for most people, you would wanna keep your elbows a little bit in front of your body just to protect your shoulder. This is just like, for me, what I feel like works the best and everybody has to kind of figure out their own form. But yeah, I also, that's how I also do like overhead press because I'm not doing it for strength, I do it for bodybuilding and I have my hands very wide and I let the bar come really far down and I keep my elbows out to my sides instead of kind of front because I don't want my chest to take over. I'm very chest dominant when it comes to like my pushing movements. So I want to try to use as, as little chest as possible. So I try to stay upright, just let my head get out of the way and when I bring it up. And then for triceps, Good old cable push downs. I do feel like when I'm looking at this video, I feel like I am using a little bit too much of my arm to bring it down. I should have controlled it a little better, but I was also trying to um, let my triceps stretch a little more, but I should have controlled it a little bit better on the way down. That being said, I did definitely feel it for sure. Definitely feel it. And I, I like the cable for my tricep stuff. Like, why are you recommending me my own video? The only other training video I had for this week was... It's kind of annoyed me that it uploaded as a short. I know, why is it recommending me my own videos? Can I stop it? See, it's really annoying that it's it's as a short. 
I don't think I can even in in it. Basically, so since I'm kind of getting back into like powerlifting movements a little bit, I'm I'm adding bench back in. I have I've been really loving dumbbells bench press lately. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> don't come for me about my recommended, okay? Don't come for me. I like zit I like zit videos. But since I've been doing a lot of um, dumbbell bench press lately, because I really love how much time to meet with your bitch ass boss. Fuck that bitch. Okay, we'll see you later, Ariel. So I've been doing a lot of dumbbell lately, but I do want to make sure that I'm kind of um, keeping up with my bench press because it is my favorite lift. I have felt like since i sur since hernia surgery last year my bench has really suffered it's the exercise that i felt like my form was really affected um by it because my stomach feels very tight and prior to surgery i had a very like my back is still arched but i had an even bigger arch but um i'm still trying to like yeah i'm just trying to work around that I do like ingrown hair videos. I do like hoof, cow hoof cleaning. I also like ingrown toenail videos. I think ingrown toenail videos is my favorite. Has their own weird little thing, really. Yeah. I mean, I like all of those weird things. So. But anyways, I see. I wish I could embiggen this, but I, it won't let me. But anyways, so this was uh, my top set. I kind of like estimated my one rep max to be around 185. And then I, I reverse engineered it to try to figure out like a, a three rep. I was trying to, I was trying to do 165 for three, but I actually ended up doing um, five, which I was kind of surprised at. You haven't ventured into the cow hoof. Uh, it's, it's not my favorite of that sort of video. Can I control plus? I don't know. I think it's fine. It's like nothing that exciting, I guess. But yeah, but you can see that I do definitely still have an arch, but it used to be way, way worse. And actually, sometimes I get really bad cramps in my my ass and my lower back. And I think maybe because I was already really sore, I didn't cramp up like I usually do. So that was kind of nice. But yeah, this was honestly a very good set for me. I felt pretty good about the form overall. I think I do need to control my breathing a little better. It's, see, how do you just go back? It doesn't let you, it doesn't let you go back. Can you rewatch it? Okay, there it goes again. I think, um, yeah, I think I just need to practice a little bit more. I have been, been doing bench since the surgery, whereas like squats and deadlifts, I have not really been doing those that much, but I have kind of been keeping up with my bench press and maybe my one rep max is higher than I thought it was, but yeah, this felt really good. Next week, I'm definitely going to do a little bit more because I am just trying to work in like kind of a, a three to five and this was at five. I think people would be surprised to know that bench is well, if you know me, you're probably not surprised, but in general, people might not know that like bench is the exercise that I push myself to the absolute max in. I've never really, you know, every once in a while with deadlift, I might feel like I get a little lightheaded, like that starts to go black a little bit, but I have legit almost passed out benching. Like I could feel the world going black as I was bench pressing like that's how hard I push myself on bench sometimes I just like I just don't do that with other exercises I don't know why gonna head out okay see you later Mr. Oddity but yeah so I felt I felt pretty good about this surprisingly good about this I think my form was pretty good the last rep got a little maybe a little squirrely but not so bad That's true. Yeah. I think we all have that one exercise we just really focus on. Yeah. And bench press is definitely that for me. For sure. What's up, Hotep? How are you today?
you wish you enjoyed much more. I think, you know, I think for a lot of women, we just don't feel as strong on some upper body exercises and that can be really frustrating. So I definitely taken the all my seriously when he said <laughs> go beyond plus ultra. Yeah, I, it, it definitely it can be like very. So I know you you don't go to a commercial gym so much, but like when I was going to a commercial gym exclusively, it would be like a little bit frustrating to feel really good about myself and my bench and then see somebody brand new to the gym come in and bench the same weight as me that I've been working out for like a really long time to get. Yeah. Feel stronger upper body than your lower body. Lower body is just lacking bad. You you did have that issue with your tailbone though. So I mean it makes sense that you've had some some struggles with your lower body. For me, I was just a bro for a really long time. Joey and I both, so our legs have always been behind our upper bodies. I think it may be probably just a genetic thing as well, but yeah. Tried to get a job as a raider, didn't pass the assessment, and then you learned you might be able to stack them. Might not be able to stack them like you planned. What's a raider? I think I'm not really sure what exactly you're talking about. But yeah, I've always felt a lot better about my upper body exercises than I have on my lower body. Not good, your legs are meant to be under. Like, not behind. Oh my god. But yeah. I just, I, I enjoy bench a lot. You think you've just never really pushed yourself hard enough with lower body? Not until lately, but yeah, the injury, of course, sets you back a lot too. Yeah. I think it's also hard because you work out by yourself. I mean, you, obviously you do some of your workouts on stream on Twitch, but it's it's not the same as having like a gym partner where you can get like that instant feedback or, you know, you have somebody with you on hand to spot you and like feel comfortable. Whereas like Joey and I have basically always worked out together. We don't always necessarily do the same workouts but most of the time we are like at the gym together or down here together. And you know, if I need a spot, I can just be like, hey, or if he needs a spot, or if I feel like, you know, if my, I don't feel like my form is good, I can just ask him, hey, like, do you see something that you notice that looks a little off? Like, can you check my form? Does it look like I'm working the muscles? Is having a friend you can work out with? Yeah, it, it does make a difference. It's really, it's very commendable that you have the motivation and the discipline to work out by yourself. But um, yeah, I mean, just aside from like the accountability, there's a lot of things. Um, there are a lot of benefits to having somebody that you can work out with. It's people that search results that you get on search engines. Plus, they didn't really tell you what answers you got wrong. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's kind of shitty that they don't tell you, they don't give you feedback on that. Yeah, Joey, watch me pop and squat real quick. No, but for real, like, I think one of the reasons that I have um, developed my back so well is because when we were going to the gym and we were doing like rear delts and like back exercises, like Joey would be there and he'd be like, okay, try to engage this muscle, you know, he'd like try to engage this or try to engage that. And it actually really helped me to feel it better. But, you know, if you're working out by yourself, it's kind of awkward to, even if you are at a commercial gym to be like, hey, can you tell me if I'm doing the thing right? You know, like most people aren't going to just like touch you like that or not that you would even want them to touch you like that. But I found it like very helpful, especially for, muscles in my back that I can't necessarily see <laughs> in a mirror or something. So, yeah. But it's why another reason, like I said, it's nice to have somebody that you can work out with, not just for accountability. <laughs> you want to be my bro, bro? I, I do feel like it is, you know, it's possible to do that. But it, it does feel awkward for sure. There was definitely like we definitely had some people 
that we talked to and kind of low key hung out with at the gym when we were going regularly to a commercial gym. There was one time I went by myself and I ended up working out with um, an older guy at the gym. We used to call him, what was his name? His name was Vito. He was, I guess he was Italian, but American. He used to be a mailman, but he was retired. And he, he was probably in his like 50s or 60s. He's really strong. He's really into powerlifting. Not like a super huge jacked dude, but kind of like, he's kind of like low key sleeper build. And he, he would, um, yeah, one time we just, I, Joey wasn't at the gym with me and I just happened to like work out with him and we did like deadlifts together. It was like really cool. It's like, it's cool to make friends at the gym. It's just, it can be difficult for sure. I, I, and I mean, I think maybe this is You never know if you don't ask people to the gym to help. That's true. What's up, William? Welcome in. Um, you know, I think it's maybe, I don't know if I would say easier. I think because I'm kind of a cute girl, relatively good looking, kind of have, I don't, I don't necessarily have like really bad resting bitch face. Um, I think I'm probably somewhat approachable at the gym, especially like when you go regularly and you see the same people every day. Like even if I didn't, even if I didn't like actually talk to people, you know, when I saw the same people every day at the gym, like I would just, you know, I would just kind of give them like one of these, I would say hi. Um, and yeah. And you know, eventually sometimes you end up like talking to people like for real, not just like hi and bye and stuff like that. But like I said, I, it's, uh, it's probably easier because I am kind of like an attractive lady at the gym working out, even though I was there with Joey, you know, Joey and I were obviously a couple, but still I think people feel more comfortable approaching me easier to say than to do on the real life but go speak to someone or even ask for help yeah but I, it does you know it does depend on your kind of environment we were going to um <clears throat> an la fitness and a lot of the people in the gym were kind of in our same age group and maybe relative fitness level so that made it easier. If you're going to a gym where the demographic is, you're outside of the normal demographic, that could definitely be more difficult. What's up? How are you doing, Gatsby? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, we're just shooting the shit. Yeah. But then at the same time, it can, it can just, it can get fucking weird because there was one trainer at the gym and he wasn't, and I will say this as a trainer at the gym that we were going to, um, he, and he was never weird to me when we were going to the same gym, but you know, we were following each other on Instagram for a while, every few months or like every year or so he will, um, message me and ask if Joey and I are still together. He he's always like trying to see if like I'm available and I'm just like, no, I'm not interested, bro. You are in the you're in the Dominican Republic. Are you on vacation? Have you ever <laughs> wondered if there was more to life other than being really, really ridiculously good looking? Yeah, it, it is a little bit weird, but it's fine. I. I don't remember if I blocked him or not. He never really did anything specifically weird, but I'm just like, okay, bro. <laughs> I'm just like, no, not single, not interested. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, he didn't say it in a creepy way. It, at least, at the very least, it's very just like straightforward. Like, hey, are you single yet? And I'm just like, no, bruh. 
it's fine. You know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna be mad about it. I, I'll say I'm, I mean, I'll say I'm slightly flattered. I guess he's a relatively good looking in shape person. Somebody that used to, he was a trainer at the commercial gym that Joey and I used to go to. <laughs> that tries to hit up my DMs every, every year or so. Yeah, it's literally like that. How about now, bruh? <laughs> it's like, nope. <laughs> Love when dudes ask you if you're single. I'm sure it happens to you quite often. Does Joey know? Joey's in the sh Joey's in the stream right now. He literally is listening to the story. But also, why would they fight? Nobody's trying to fight. I'm just like, no, I'm not, not interested. If Joey tried to fight every dude that tried to, I know, yeah, Joey don't give a fuck. If if Joey tried to fight every dude that I was completely uninterested in that was slipping into my DMs, like there'd be a lawsuit on our hands. It's just not worth it. Imagine fighting someone over a guy hitting on your girl who doesn't give a shit. Dudes that fight over that shit have trust issues. Joey's would have to fight them now until the heat death of the universe. Joey would have a new full-time job. Joey a fighter? I think Joey has been known to throw hands, but he's relatively chill. Like, Joey Joey would throw hands if he had to throw hands, but he's not specifically looking to. You know what I'm saying? Would, but he doesn't have to. That's the thing. I'm just like, no thank you. No thank you. There's no need. Joey threw a lot of hands back in the day. Joey used to have fight clubs in military boarding school. He got, I love that he, I love the story about that Korean dude that kicked him in the face from really close up. That's like my favorite story. Has in the past tossed a hand or two. Imagine Joey running across the country to fight people. No, he wouldn't. That's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Why? You told me about some of your shit, Joey. Yeah, Joey, Joey done some shit. Once had a guy try to fight you over a woman he wasn't even interested in? What? People are, people are wild sometimes. You, you don't have to do all that. It's not that serious. Yeah, Joey, Joey has gotten aggro with people at conventions in defense of other people, but has not specifically thrown hands. I've also done the same thing though. To be fair, I've I've straight screamed in people's faces for being creepy to my friends. So yeah, I, that's kind of how you gotta be if you are like the body build, the bodyguard at a convention. Like I'll I'll fuck around. Giga Chad. <laughs> yeah, like have a f temperament and fight if there is a situation. Exactly. Joey's at work right now, or maybe he's on his way home. Joey might be on his way home right now. Yeah. Anything else I specifically want to... Does anybody have any fitness questions today? I want to make sure that there's... When did you square up in the Psyduck outfit? I don't remember that. Have I ever punched anyone? Mmm... No. I have choked someone out, but it was more of like a playful choke out. One of my coworkers one time when I was working at a grocery store thought that they could like, um, thought they could get a little, not frisky, like they didn't try to touch me or anything, but I don't know. We just had a little play fight and I choked him out a little bit. Yeah, no, I didn't use the karate. I gave him, I gave them the BJJ. Yeah. I don't even remember what happened, it, but it wasn't a big deal. It was just like playful. <laughs> but I'm, I, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu grappling, the BJJ. But yeah, I'm pretty like, I, realistically, I am kind of confrontational. If the situation calls for it, I don't like to be confrontational. I get a lot of anxiety about it, but 
you know, if, if something is happening, I try to stand up for people. If, if I don't see anybody else standing up, I try to do my best. But I really don't like to, um, I, I don't like confrontation and I don't like to get violent. I also don't like violence to happen to me. I really don't like to get punched in the face. That's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped doing martial arts. But yeah, like if I have to, I will, but I, I really don't like to. It really gives me bad anxiety. <laughs> Give her a yeah! Yeah! But yeah, I have done karate in the past, kickboxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mixed martial arts type of stuff. <coughs> but yeah, a lot of times if you just like call people out, they will kind of back down and you don't have to fight anybody. But you know, for the right reasons, I, I would do it if I had to. But. Parents had this massive guardian dog when you and your siblings were young. Wear it up inside it. Who started crying? Me? I don't remember the side duck situation. Really like kids would watch us and play with us praying one time the dog attacked the wolf and killed it. Holy shit. I do remember there was one year we went to Otakon and I was in a group of friends and we were doing costumes from Queen's Blade, which is like a hentai anime. Um, so our costumes were pretty revealing and we were in Baltimore taking pictures and there was a creepy dude that was not affiliated with the con at all, was not at the con, just uh, a guy in Baltimore kept coming up to us and saying like weird shit and Joey like had to yell at him to get the fuck out of here. So yeah, that was helpful. It was not you. It was not you. Really on the anxiety part. Had a minor confrontation on Bart this weekend. Don't respond well to adrenaline. Gets all jittery and emotional. Yeah. Of course, the hentai con was in the Baltimore. <laughs> there was a hentai anime at an anime con. Yo, what's up, Jack Geek? How are you? But yeah, I, there was also, remember that one time, remember I talked about that time I had to, I, I got in a dude's face because he asked if I was trans. It was that same convention and it was that same outfit. So the outfit was like very low cut. It wasn't, it wasn't like the most revealing, but like the neckline was very low and obviously I have really small boobs. So he asked if he could take a picture and I was like, sure. And I went to pose, he was holding up his camera and I went to pose and then he put it down and he was like, wait, are you a guy? And, and I got in his face about it. I was like, does it fucking matter? Dude, take your fucking picture. And he got like, really like, <laughs> oh yeah, he said trap. He said, are you a trap? And I got, I got on him about it. Cause it's like, why does it even matter? Like if you think I'm cute and you like my costume i didn't i didn't go all into it but basically i was just like take your fucking picture bro because whether i have a dick or not i would never fuck you <laughs> wolf was closing us when you're playing in the field so the dog come running out stand between you and the wolf and the wolf tried to attack your sister and the dog leaped on the wolf holy shit could have been fun if you mega dropped your voice i i will tell you that I am really bad at responding to confrontational situations at the time. Like I always think after the fact, oh, I should have handled it this way, or I could have done this, you know, all those intrusive thoughts we always have. I just, I don't, my brain doesn't clap back very well. So yeah, in retrospect, that probably would have been more funny but it just doesn't occur to me to do that kind of stuff. And like one of the things that I learned to do when I was working at the grocery store, because I'm really bad at clapping back at people. And basically I couldn't get fired because um, 
Joey's parents were the owners of the store and I was like, I was like the assistant manager. You couldn't fire me, but I'm just like not good at dealing with customers in sweaty situations. So I developed this response of like making like really ridiculous faces when customers get annoying, right? So like they'd be like talking, but I'm just like, I just make really dumb faces, just like really out there, like confused, like, is this person for real? Like that kind of stuff. It actually worked pretty well a lot of the times and the customer would usually like back down without me really having to say much. But yeah, it's just like, I'm, just, yeah. Instant flight response, no clap back line. I just like, yeah. I just like, I'm, I'm ne I've never been good at that. I've always been on the more quiet side. Should have done this, always happens, yeah. Always happens later. Make them feel as uncomfortable. That's what I would try to do. Like make them really feel really uncomfortable without having to say anything. <laughs> and it, it actually worked quite well <laughs> in some situations. I'm, I'm glad I don't really have to, I don't have to deal with that anymore. I don't work in customer service. I definitely have a, a healthy respect for people that have to work in customer service for that reason. I try to be a, a pretty good customer. Also, I just want to say if anybody has any like fitness, nutrition sort of questions, like just because we're not talking about it doesn't mean that we can't talk about it. Feel free to put your questions in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. Um, yeah, it's just like if they're, they're, we just talk about whatever around here. I'm trying to think if I had any anything else specific to talk about. I already said we really love Fallout and we also watched Parasite. Showed the workout videos. Oh, I could do some posing, I guess. <coughs> also, I kind of had to pee. <sighs> My ass is so sore. Is there like protein noodles available? So I'm not sure what you have available to you, Mopar, in your country. But it's past midnight, you got that con plague, bro! Uh, oh, I forgot to ask how your con was, but I guess you got con plague. Have a good night. No, I've said fitness questions, bro. Otherwise, just go use Google. So the con was mega fun. I'm glad to hear that. So in, there are some, I don't think they really have them in stores, but I know that you can order like protein ramen online. I personally have not tried them because I don't think it's worth it. They aren't necessarily low calorie. And if I'm just gonna eat instant ramen, I'd rather just have the regular calorie version or try to find like an, an air fried version that has slightly less calories, but tastes about the same. I, I did not tell them. I didn't know if it was would be okay to like dox him like that. So I didn't know if I should really talk about that. But yeah. See you later, Dark. But there are other noodle options that I can get in America. So some companies will specifically make protein pasta that just has a little bit more protein in it. It's not, I wouldn't necessarily consider it a high protein food, but it does help. And as far as I know, it tastes pretty good. Usually if I'm looking for like a higher protein pasta substitute, I will get pasta that's made from garbanzo beans. Yeah, I, I, like, I like the bonza garbanzo bean pasta, which is, you know, the serving, the calories per serving is about the same as regular pasta, but it's got, I don't know, like two or three or four times as much protein. But the edamame pasta and the black bean pasta that you can also get in America is also pretty good. I think I prefer the, out of the edamame and the black bean, I think I prefer the edamame. I think I just like the flavor better. The bean pasta gets you tootin'. Yeah, it do be like that, I mean. It's just beans in general, but those are the kind of like protein pasta options that we have here. 
that and those I can find just in the regular grocery store pretty easily. I bought I think I bought some bonza garbanzo bean pasta at Costco even just like a huge thing of it. It's definitely not quite as good as like regular pasta, but it is a really good substitute, I would say. I, the, the texture and the flavor is just like slightly off, but actually I like the flavor of it. The texture is just not quite the same. It's not my absolute favorite, but it, it can be like a really good substitute. Oh, Jesus. Glutes. Really, really destroyed right now. You need to check the stores in here online for selection, what is available. Yeah, so, like I said, I'm, just, I'm not really sure what they have in your area that you, you would be able to find. But it is something that we have in America, at least where I live in America. Um, yeah, for me, I don't think the ramen is worth it, but the... The pasta is worth it. But it, like I said, it's not necessarily a low calorie food. It's just a higher protein alternative. Also, I have to pee really bad. I'm going to pee really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. What do I think of the Liver King? I mean, to be honest, I don't really know anything about the Liver King, except that he lied about being natural, which, I mean, goes against... You're out of here, you're dying. Okay, good night. See you later. Do a slep, get better. Um, but basically, the Liver King lied about being natural. And a lot of people believed him, and I think he made a lot of money from lying, which goes against my own personal code of conduct. So you guys know I'm very transparent about um, the performance-enhancing drugs that I've used, and I think that people should be. It's either like, yeah, get less sick, bruh. You know, if you're if you're gonna do the thing, travel less. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're going to do the thing, I'm not judging anybody for using performance enhancing drugs. That's a personal decision. But don't lie about it in order to sell stuff or to make money. Right? You know, if you, if you just don't say anything about it, like, fine. But don't actively lie about it in order to make a profit off of people that think that they can look like you. Because that's not realistic. But that's not just like how I think about the Liver King. That's how I think about everybody. Like I, I can understand if you can't talk about it, but yeah, like did I set it up good? I should have probably brought some heels down here. We're all grown adults. Be honest, don't be stupid, and don't be a dick about it. Exactly. Exactly. 
don't lie to people to make money off of them. So for the Ape Classic, I'm planning to kind of, for the showcase, do like a figure routine. And figure girls typically are a little more muscular than bikini and wellness in the upper body, but not as big as somebody that's in the physique or bodybuilding category. And they really only have like four basic poses, even in their like, sh like full show routines. So I do want to like, once I get that part down, I'm going to try to spice it up with some other poses as well, just like for funsies. But yeah, I do need to like practice. I also should bring heels down because I need to practice the walk. I really notice a lot um, when people are doing their walk, they like kind of come across and then do this and it really shows the leg. And that's something I have to like work on because I'm really bad at like walking in heels. But yeah, that's something I noticed like when they kind of like bring their foot kind of across their body for like kind of that hip sway. And then, but when they land their foot points out, it really emphasizes the quads. Yeah. Little details are important. Yeah, I also, I really need to work on the transitions because like stationary, I for sure, I think that like I do an okay job of like posing, but I have, I'm not good at like my hands. That's something that I need to work on. I should also work a little bit on my flexibility. And I've seen them do it where they switch their feet because I don't think it matters if you have your knee up in the front or the back, but I see sometimes they switch it like during their routine. <sighs> Watch how far back the hips get. So never know what to do with your hands, not even regarding posing, but in life. Watch how far back their hips are to get the rectus for Morris. Yeah, they definitely, like, it doesn't necessarily, you know, when people do, like, the back pose, it kind of looks like they're standing straight. But you actually, if you see them from the side, I think they are bending over quite a bit or, like, arching their lower back. Obviously, you can't really see what's going on with my glutes because I'm wearing pants. Also, like, it's really difficult for me to, and this is just something that's going to take practice. It's really difficult for me to pose because I'm thinking so hard about the pose. My breathing isn't good. So I end up like, <sighs> like huffing and puffing. But yeah, I also think I need to, I, I have a hard time doing the thing where you push your leg into the other leg to get it to pop. Like, I, I don't think I'm doing it, but I think my legs just aren't big enough. Like, I feel like I have to like cross my feet. I don't know. Also, this is, my side pose is just not that good. I don't think I look that great from the side. And in figure, if my hair was longer, I would put my hair to the side, but I don't really need to do that right now. And when I'm doing these front and back poses, I'm really thinking about like pushing, obviously my foot is planted, but I'm pushing trying to like tense my knees out to the side to try to engage my quads more and make them flex harder. It's really difficult. I get cramps. And then, so for figure, they do front, side, back, and then the other side. And this side I'm like especially weak on. I think I'm also 
Not really centered. I, I don't have good thoracic mobility, I think. A lot of times I get cramps in my lower back. Ugh, it's also really difficult for me to see from that angle. I was looking. But the lighting is better over there. The lighting really stinks here, but there's not really much I can do about it. I also, my shoulders are not even. Just like, I think this whole side of my body is lower. I'm wondering if I should try to overcorrect for it or not. Got that crazy taper, you think so? I think my, I, I'm the kind of person that my lats insert on the higher side, which means I can look a little bit wider. I'm trying to, the, the hard thing is like when I try to look at other people posing, you know, if you're doing a front pose, you never see what they look like doing that pose from the side. Where like that would be really helpful for somebody trying to learn how to do it to see like what they're doing. Pretty wild from the back. so bad yeah i mean just for you know when it comes to like a bodybuilding show i want to try to make myself look as symmetrical as possible but i wonder if it's like necessary or not i'm getting really tired and sore back looks great thank you reference yeah my shoulders are still really lacking shoulders are also not even found out when getting fitted for a tux and the attendant's like do you know your shoulders aren't even <laughs> yeah it's always something that I've noticed about myself, I, it's like this whole side, was this my right side? This whole side is smaller. Like you can even see like this eyebrow is higher than the, than this one. My, J3U might coach some gals with reference picks, you'll check and send it. Appreciate that. I definitely should check out his stuff more there's one there's like one lady that has won the figure division for like a really long time so i've been like trying to look at her stuff um obviously i don't want to copy her style or anything but she has definitely has like a very distinct style with the way she like um does her routine but it's really difficult to find other stuff outside of her because <clears throat> they don't really have like um as many competitions with that division right and like i said the routine is very is really basic like usually from what i saw it's like they walk out they walk across so they would like come out and obviously my walk isn't good they come out, you know, and they might do like a pose and then walk forward and then kind of come into the front pose, you know, do the transition to the side. And then they might switch the leg side still transition to the back, do the back pose and do the other side. And then that's basically it. Do your little like walk off thing. And then like you walk away. There might be some amount of walking like back and forth, but it's, yeah, it's just like very basic. So actually my, my left side is the bigger side and, but I'm right hand dominant. So I think it's, I think for me, it's like, just like a growth thing. It's not necessarily like Mm, the muscles are bigger they might be but yeah it's more of like i think just overall growth or you know maybe 
the right side is the side that I sleep on and it got stunted because of that stuff like that yeah yeah and it's like um you know one of my feet is bigger than the other by a little bit but yeah a lot of lot to think about when it when you come to posing I just really like I just like men's posing better like it's just more interesting more fun my favorite pose lately has been i don't remember what it's called maybe it's called a teacup pose i think this is a good pose for me i can't remember which foot is supposed to go off right one foot is a little bigger than the other yeah Like for me, I also need to remember when I'm doing like a front double biceps, I need to have my arms up a little higher. I think I'm more like, you know, naturally kind of go like here, but they should be higher up when I do those kind of things. I would say honestly, like uh, women's physique and Bodybuilding has the the most interesting and fun poses, but I just don't feel like, you know, and could be arguable. I just don't think I have the, the shape for that right now as I am. But, you know, I mean, comparing myself to like other people that are relatively natural. Like, I don't know, I don't, it's hard to tell because I'm not even in in front of the camera 100%, but like, should I, how much do I need to adjust? Watching the Olympia individual routines right now. See, I tried to, I tried to like go and find them, but it's like, they just don't have a lot. Like, they didn't even have figure at the Arnold. There's a lot of stuff for like bikini and wellness, but not a lot for for figure, unfortunately. But yeah, I need to keep looking around. I think I need to, I, I do need to bring some high heels down to like do that. Huh. What time did I start stream? Anybody have any other comments, questions, or concerns? We had like that hiccup earlier that kind of messed up my stream. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. If I'm going to like delete that or not. Maybe just change the title to part one and part two. But altogether, I think it's been over two hours. I've kind of run out of things to specifically talk about. So. It's... Got a very similar silhouette for figure, for sure. Yeah, that's what I think so too. Also, I also mentioned it, I think, I, yeah, I think I mentioned it earlier in this stream, but I will be competing in the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast Classic, which is just like an online, um, open to everyone, fun transformation and posing routine showcase. And that's why I'm practicing some of this posing stuff that I haven't really done in the past, talking about like coming up with a routine and stuff. There is information about it in the description section of this video. Basically what you have to do is um, join the Ape Discord, verify there, and then there's gonna be a whole lot of information about the Ape Classic. The, it's like I said, open to everyone, free to join. There's gonna be prizes. I am doing the transformation challenge and the showcase, but the transformation challenge is very open-ended. You know, there's not, you don't have to lose a certain amount of weight. We're not competing to see who can lose the most amount of weight or anything like that. Um, it's really what you make of it. And it's more about progress and accountability and maybe motivation to help people 
um, reach their fitness goals. So I will be doing a cut when I get back from vacation for that. I'm for myself, but also it kind of times really well. Will it be streamed somewhere? I think that, and feel free to correct me, I think that it will be streamed on Twitch on Afro IRL's channel, Twitch channel. But the VOD will be taken over to YouTube, the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast YouTube channel. I will for sure, you know, at the time, the, the final, the showcase day is in September 13th, I think? Sometime in September. I will 100% totally let everybody know like what's going on. I'll, I'll talk about it in stream and I'll have links and stuff like that so people can go watch it. Um, yeah, but it, it will be streamed somewhere and then the video will live on somewhere as well. But like I said, I think, um, yeah, still a hot minute. So basically also for the transformation challenge, it's like, um, there's three opportunities to sign up. It will either be on Twitch or just YouTube live. Gotcha. Um, there's three opportunities to sign up. There's 20 weeks, 15 weeks and 10 weeks. And the reason we're doing it that way is just so there's kind of a definitive time frame for how long the transformation took. Yeah. So right now the 20 week sign up is live and people can submit their before videos. Um, and I plan to do that soon. I'm just waiting for something to come in the mail because I didn't have anything appropriate I could wear for the before and after, but we're not submitting the after stuff until like September. But I think, um, it's very early on 20 weeks is a long time for me personally i actually don't really recommend cutting for more than 16 weeks at a time but this really gives people a long time to like plan and cut slowly like no crash dieting necessary for this kind of stuff and as it is just like very casual it is what you make of it it doesn't have to be um you don't have to kill yourself to participate and you shouldn't feel like you have to. And there are gonna be prizes, but they're gonna be voted on by the people. It's not um, it's not based on any sort of like metric of how you how much you lost or something like that. Yeah, almost half a year. And I mean for some people like that, that's a really reasonable amount of time. Like you cannot make a big change to your body composition overnight. And I think for a lot of people, it's, um, yeah, plenty of time You get some refeeds, but also the way that I will usually go into a cut is that I will, you know, I'll start at kind of a higher calorie intake and drop it slowly over a few weeks instead of going into a steep deficit. And I find that a little bit more sustainable, a little bit easier for me to stick to when I'm not going from like eating normally to to eating way, way, way less. It feels really bad when you do that, you know, a lot of like hunger signals and things like that. But if I kind of like ease down slowly, um, I find that more sustainable for me. But yeah, usually 16 weeks is what I aim for when it comes to a cut. So, but I'll be in Japan, but basically you can, you can submit pictures um, at the, the 20, 15 and 10 week mark and whichever kind of you decide you like the best for your transformation, when you submit, you can let Acro know and he'll he'll use those. Or maybe he'll show all of them, who knows? But yeah. I do kind of like, actually I was thinking for people that are submitting at, at different times, it would be cool to see, you know, if there's major progress in between each thing, instead of just like before and after, you know, you have a little bit of the in-between. But yeah, it's just, yeah, I was just thinking that. Any other comments, questions, or concerns? Joey's going to be a unit. Yeah, Joey is going to be doing the transformation challenge as well. If anybody remembers the Zenbro classic from last year, Joey participated in that. And he had a really, um, I don't want to say extreme. It's kind of like in line with how he usually cuts but i can show you the before and after from last year 
let's see what's it on. Also, bump up the C word for the last eight to 10 weeks. Honestly, for me personally, I do not. Um, I don't usually add cardio. God, it's really difficult to pull that up. So this was Joey's transformation from last year. It got posted on the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast Instagram. I know it's kind of like fucked up because of the camera, but like you can see this was the before and this was the after. No, that doesn't help. Doesn't probably doesn't help if I turn up my brightness either. Doesn't help if I turn it down either. You can kind of see it a little better. Yeah. So, but like I said, it's, it, it's what, it is what you make of it. And, you know, you don't have to be holding to yourself to other people's transformations. It's just a way for people to have something to work towards. It puts it in a nice time frame. I always, well, I guess we don't really talk about it too much, but I do think it is really important when you are on a fitness journey that you have a specific goal in mind and having it within a specific time frame also really helps you know it's not some kind of like ephemeral thing that's going to happen in the future it's something that you're working towards within a very specific time period <sighs> yes so if, if anybody here was interested in participating in that you can get the link and more information in the description. Like I said, you have to come to the Aesthetic Physique Enthusiast Discord and then you can sign up there. And if you're in my Discord and you have questions about it, anything, just feel free to message me about it. I'm happy to answer more questions. Um, yeah, any other, any other, anything else y'all want to talk about before I head out for the day? Haven't both in kind of a while before that, but you want to demonstrate to people what's possible. Yeah, like that we're all doing it together. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's nice. Um, n it is nice to have friends and other people in the community that are all kind of doing the same thing. Uh, it is like, it is like an accountability thing and it's nice. <laughs> Yeah, so Joey and I don't necessarily do big bulking and cutting that much anymore because we're kind of farther along in our fitness journey. But, you know, sometimes we bulk out of control. That's a voice you haven't heard in a long time. Glad you could catch some of the stream. Yo, what's up, B-Wolf? How are you? I actually think I'm gonna get off pretty soon. But we are just talking about the Ape Classic. I also was not really planning to do any major cut and bulk anymore, but then I kind of got a little out of control. It's been, I, you know, I fully intended to keep the size of my stomach relatively expanded because I want to eat a lot of food when we're in Japan, but then I also played myself because I'm really hungry all the time. So it is what it is. I'll, and to be fair, I could, you know, I could make my hot girl soup, but. Nancy did an eight week bulk transformation and gained 24 pounds. Well, I bulked, but I didn't, I didn't gain that much in such a short amount of time. Rough week, been pulling through, gotta decide what kind of cut you're gonna do for the Ape Classic. Well, the thing is that you can, um, you can submit any time the submissions are open. So like, I think it honestly makes sense for most people just to put something in at every time, just in case. Like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send some befores every, at every opportunity, just in case. Because, you know, I might come back from Japan and be like way bigger than I am now. Although typically I lose weight when I'm on vacation. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I've kind of been recommending. I think Remad, was it Remad, was asking in the Discord, and I was kind of saying, like, it, it Cool Runnings did a way better job of, like, I think I, I, I think I ended up making him more confused, but Cool Runnings um, did a really good job of explaining it. But yeah, you can submit. You don't have to submit just one time. You could submit at 20, 15, and 10 weeks. And I think just in case. So yeah, it just depends. Like for me, it just depends. That's more than you gained when you did your dirty ball. So like, I, well, I don't, I'm not trying to like shame Nancy or nothing. Cause it's really not that big a deal. She's been working out really hard. Um, but oops. Trying to look at my, oops, one year. So in the last year, I've gained about 20 pounds. This is my, my fitness pal. In the last year, I have kind of gone from like 145 to 165, maybe like 143 to 167 if we're like really counting it. But yeah, how much? Since all, what's all? It's it. This is harder to look at because that's everything. But yeah, show you doing weight. You went from like one eighty two to like two hundred and eight weeks of dirty bulking. It'd be like that for some people if you're like active and you already have like a lot of muscle mass, which can make it a little bit more difficult to um, gain weight because your metabolism is a little higher. Yeah, I, I have not been struggling to gain weight this time. I have in the past had a little bit of trouble gaining weight, but this time I have not. I've just been going too crazy. She was taking it pretty serious with the Osterine, which 100% works. Yeah, for sure. For real. That's another reason why I've been having a hard time controlling my food intake is because I've been on... Osterine and MK667. And it just makes me really hungry. What's up, Jerica? No, I'm not getting gains. We're just chatting. It do be fast. You missed meals here and there for a month and lost 10 pounds. Mistakes were made, rip. I'm actually finna, finna end stream here pretty soon. I don't know if anybody else has any specific comments, questions, or concerns. You been hard controlling your food intake because you bought some sourdough bro I, I i try not to have bread in the house because i would definitely would go in on some bread but we do have a lot of noodles and i love noodles i love noodles i'm more of like a noodles guy than i am like a, a rice or a um a rice or a bread person. I'm all about the noodles. Although we have been eating a lot of kanji. New foods lately? New foods. Nothing specific. I don't think so. I think we just eaten the same old stuff. We had kanji last night. I made kanji. Osterine definitely works well. You consider it MK666. So many times just for the hunger part. Need the ghrelins. Yeah, it, I mean, the thing is, it's also, so I take it in the morning and that's why it makes me really hungry. Joey takes it at night and he kind of like sleeps off the hunger part. But for me, the way that, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I think the actual stuff is in a, an oil-based solution, which makes it, it really like coats your thrussy. And when I try to take it at night, it makes it like really hard to sleep. And I wake up with like really bad dry mouth. So I have to take it in the morning. Just get on test, bruh. Yeah, just get on test, honestly. Like you don't need to fuck around. Joey's home, but I'm about to end stream. What are Ooh. you doing? Yeah, it's in oil. It's, uh, it's like the taste is really bad. And like, ugh. Your doctor doesn't want you to, but you're trying to get on SARMs, which does a lot of the same stuff. Seems sus. Anyways, if there's no other specific comment, question, or concern, I'm gonna end stream. But now I'm getting tie. I'm getting tie tie. 
I'm getting tie tie. My ass is so sore. I'm honestly feeling like I've been feeling kind of extra fat lately, but my abs are just a tiny bit popping today. You got off testing your doctor probably wants you back on it. Not getting on signs yet, but bound to happen at some point. I mean, it, at that some point, you might as well just get on test. At that some point, you might as well just go for it, bruh. But, you know, I understand. It is what it is. True. As we pop in there, I mean, and maybe it's just the lighting and the camera has more contrast than usual, you know, than real life. True. Do we want to prescribe? You live in Canada, gamer. If you lived in America, maybe he could help you. He can't prescribe you, but he could, you know, he could get it for you with a prescription. He can't prescribe you. He's not that kind of a doctor. But he could help, he could, you know, help you get it. I guess they're kind of okay even in the mirror. Yeah, he's not the kind of doctor, bro. He can't prescribe it. Uh-oh, there's a tote. Mr. Tote? Would you like a trip? Drive eight hours. Oh shit, yeah. I mean, kind of worth it. This shit's expensive. Mr. Tote? There you go. Mr. Machip? Mr. Tote? And Mr. Machip? And a Mr. Tote. One for, one more for the tote. You, you, he's eating good nowadays, now that we got those feeders. <laughs> Anna, good to see you. I know, they grab my hand and then they give me the bite. Who's getting picked up? Ooh, look at this guy, look at him. His gooch is not super bald. Little late, you had to salute the boys. I appreciate you, bro. Look at him. He's got a little purple collar. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, did you hear that? Can I squeeze him? Let me stop. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, now he's hacking. Now he stopped. Now he's hacking. Okay. So, who's messaging me? JD, who's messaging me? Who at me? Anyways, okay. I'm about to end the stream. Thank you for being here, everybody. Don't forget to be responsible for your own gains. Don't be a dick and control your cop. Your cat sneezed so hard she barfed, bruh. If you are here, if you're new here, welcome again. I so appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed my content, you can subscribe and you can turn on notifications so you don't miss a stream. If you liked, the live stream or you watched the video and you enjoyed it you can give it a thumbs up over here you can also subscribe in this general area if you want to see more content this is what the algorithm recommends for you and you can see the entire playlist of past live streams down here bye everyone